we're gonna be talking about how fun it is to clean the Hellcat today. So we all know the real fun with these takes place out on the range, whether you're just uh, indoor, outdoor training, having fun, whatever. You gotta clean them, you've gotta lubricate them, especially if you're in adverse climates, humid climates, you've been sweating on it, it's your EDC piece. Now different manufacturers recommend different things. If you're gonna be carrying something like this, you should probably clean it and maintain it every month if it's a regular EDC piece for you. Do a deep cleaning after a few hundred rounds or a range trip, and then just inspect the thing occasionally if it sits in your safe, make sure it's lubricated and doesn't start to you know, get corrosive or anything on there because inside a gun safe is not always the safest place for things when it comes to corrosion and rust. So if you're interested in anything you see here as far as the products, cleaning tools, I will leave links for that stuff down below. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and get subbed up, get belled up and turn the notification bell on down there to all notifications. And of course, if you like anything here, Hellcat or what's going on, go and give the video a like. We're gonna go ahead and get into cleaning and maintenance on the Hellcat right now. All right, let's go ahead and jump into how to clean your Hellcat. So there's a couple things you're gonna need for this. Well, more than a couple, a few. Uh, I will leave links for this stuff down below. One of the main things you're going to want to use, obviously, a good solvent, good cleaner. Breakthrough cleaner is decent stuff. I've tried a bunch of others. You can choose the solvent which you want to go with. A good oil. I love the Lucas Oil products. Uh, they make products for cars that go super fast with a lot of heat and metal on metal contact. So I trust that they're going to make good lubrication. I put the cleaner in a smaller squirt bottle because it's just easier to use than this. You're gonna want some form of cleaning brush, a nylon cleaning brush, and then you're gonna want something like a nylon bore brush. You don't really wanna use a really aggressive metal brush inside this, that nylon's gonna clean it just fine. You can use patches. I only have these because I bought patches a long time ago and I haven't used them all. Or you can cut up an old t-shirt or use something like either, this is actually a surgical cloth, I've got a bunch of these laying around or something like a microfiber as well. Completely up to you on which one you want to use. Then you're going to want some form of gloves. Okay. Um, there's a lot of, you know, green cleaners and everything out there, but there's an old saying, if it's on you, it's in you. Okay. There are chemicals from the gunpowder and everything else in here that you do not want absorbing into your body. So whenever you're cleaning, maintaining your firearms, try to wear gloves, especially if you're using non-green or non-biodegradable products, because you don't want those in your bloodstream. So I'm gonna glove up and we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, well that glove's about as good as the last time I wore a condom, it already tore. So let's go ahead. First thing we're always gonna wanna do is remove the magazine, which is the feeding device, ensure that it is empty. Lock the slide to the rear. You're gonna look down through there. All you should see is air, and then you're gonna look into the chamber and ensure there are no rounds inside there. And we're gonna go ahead and just remove the magazine completely from our work area. Not even a thought at this point, right? So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and flip our lever up to break this down, ride the slide forward, pull the trigger, it comes apart, push forward and up, recoil spring and guide rod assembly, push the barrel forward and pull it at an upward angle out the back. This is as far as you are going to want to break this thing down unless you really know what you're doing or unless you have an armor doing something for you, working on it or whatever, and they are there to take it apart and put it back together for you. That being said, this is kind of the order I like to do things. Um, I like to go ahead and start by spraying down the barrel and in the bore first. That way it can give it a little bit of time to soak. I'm just going to go ahead put a squirt or two right on the front and then right down the barrel, you'll see it kind of drip out. And I'm just gonna lay that there. I might actually put the sides of the barrel in that liquid like that, just to get all of that carbon starting to soak on there so it will come off. As far as the rest of everything, I'm gonna apply the cleaner to the brush. Think about it like a paintbrush. You don't wanna throw the paint at the wall and then start painting. You put it on the brush and you paint the wall. Kind of the same thing here, cause we don't wanna put a ton of cleaner and lubricants down inside this thing. So that's just how I like to do it. We'll go ahead and we will start right here with the slide. So I'm gonna grab my brush, switch hands again, and just put, you know, two, three squirts on there. You don't need a ton of cleaner on these things. You can see it dripping off. And you're just gonna clean, and sure you clean up in the rails. Okay, you really wanna get those areas in there because that's where the carbon is gonna build up. And it's also what can slow your slide down and cause it not to reciprocate appropriately. So you go ahead and you'll clean that out, clean in here really good, right up around that stuff right there. 
good job in there. And then you're going to want to get all up in here in the front, just like that, because that's where things like to drip forward. Make sure you clean that out. And I've already cleaned this thing once right when I got home from the range the last time I used it. Um, and you'll kind of see, you just clean this until you are content. An area that you're going to want to pay a lot of attention to is right in there where that extractor is. Okay. You want to make sure that that is very clean up underneath there and on that breech face right there as well. You want to make sure that is very clean and free from all of the carbon and chunks that can build up in there. So let me go ahead and grab this little plastic pick because that is the part right here that extracts the expand casing. If you've got a bunch of carbon build up in there, you can get up there with a plastic pick and get it out. And I'll show you that right now. All right. So these are plastic picks. You don't really want to use metal ones all the time. They're made by a company called Tipton. And all you can do is if you've got some extra carbon up in there, you can just get up underneath here and go ahead and scrape it off just like that. Just make sure that there's no big chunks up underneath there. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and put that off to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Now this frame, the metal parts in here are pretty much gonna tell you where you need to clean. Everywhere that's polished off like that is gonna need lube. And then you'll see the areas that are already polished that might have carbon on them. You're gonna to wanna to scrub those off and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just go ahead and add a little bit, another squirt onto our brush. And we're just gonna clean the rails, focusing up underneath them right there, okay? Make sure you get those front and rear. And again, you're just gonna do this until you feel happy that you have cleaned this as good as you wanna clean it. Because it's all about how much you wanna clean it. Clean the front right there where that little feed ramp is. Make sure that's nice and shiny. Clean off the locking block area. And then just go right over that sear. Make sure there's no chunks of carbon in there, anything like that on the rails. Once you are good to go, you go ahead and call it a day on that. This is when we're gonna grab our shirt or cloth or whatever you got to work with microfiber and just wipe all of that excess off. And I'll show you a trick to get really tight up underneath the rails and everything here in a second. So just wipe the big stuff off. Same thing with the slide. Just put the slide in there and wipe that all off as well. Let me get your finger up in there, wipe it off. You can use the back of the brush like this as well. Get up in there if you got bigger fingers, you know, get in those areas like that and just get the big chunks off for now. Because what we'll do now is we'll make sure that our uh, brush is a little dry. Put that to the side. We'll go ahead and grab one of these cleaning cloths and we'll stick that up in there. And we'll just use the edge of the bristles of the brush to get it jammed up into the rails so we can get all the small stuff that we may have missed with the shirt and you'll see how much stuff comes off. You can see right there a little bit more. So just make sure you get both sides. And like I said, you clean this until you are content that you have to clean as you need. These things do not need to be perfectly 100%, you know, inspector clean, you know, like a general is going to come check you out. It's just got to be clean enough to run. Once that's done, we'll do the same thing here. We'll get it right up underneath that rail. Just make sure we've got all the rest of that stuff from out from underneath there. Just like that. Make sure you get right up under that too as well, right where the arm comes up for your slide lock. Just go ahead and get that in there as well. Make sure all that stuff is good to go. So at this point, those are pretty much done. Grab your recoil spring guide rod, just wipe it down. Don't need to do anything crazy with this thing. Wipe it down, get any excess stuff off. There's chunks on there, just knock it off with a brush. Nothing hard there. Go ahead and put that to the side. What we're going to do now, we've got plenty of cleaner still up in the barrel. You're just going to run your nylon brush right through there. You know, however many times you want. I would say a good amount of time is maybe, you know, five, 10 times, something like that. Go all the way through and then all the way back. Okay. Don't stop halfway. Go all the way through and all the way back just like that. And you'll kind of feel it smooth out a little bit. So once you think you are good there, just go ahead and pull that out. Your bore is going to be clean. And now you're going to want to focus on the feed ramps all around here and where the guide rod fits in, the locking block, all that stuff. Just clean it off. Get in all those gaps, any corner, pretty much anywhere there's a corner. That's where 
carbon is going to hang up or anywhere there's an edge up underneath, like right there. That's where carbon is going to want to hang out. So go ahead, scrub all the way down the barrel, get all that stuff off. And once you feel that you're good there, again, just grab your towel, wipe everything off. And you can see very nice and shiny. So you've got it all good to go. So at this point, we'll go ahead and grab the semi dirty patch right there. And what we're going to do is run that right through the barrel to get anything that's left in there off and to clean the rest of that cleaner out, get it nice and dry. Same thing, run it all the way through, run it all the way back, all the way through, all the way back. Do that a few times. And you can take, you can take a look down in there. Now you can see pretty clean, pretty good. Doesn't need to be perfect. So what we'll go ahead and do is lube the barrel up first. So we'll put a fresh patch on there. Get some of that Lucas oil. Wet that patch a little bit right there. Doesn't need to be a ton of lube on there, but we are going to use this again here shortly. So if we've got a little extra on there, not a problem. And you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to run this through three or four good times and kind of turn it each time you do it. Uh, once you come back through, turn that like this, that way you're ensuring that you're getting oil everywhere down in there. Just like that. Once you feel that you've gotten that thing with as much lube as you need on it, just go ahead, grab that cloth, use the rest of that oil to lube up your barrel because that's going to be about putting a drop on there and spreading around with your finger, which is all that it really needs. Make sure you get up underneath these areas, up in there, anywhere. And this, like I said, it's going to tell you where it needs to be cleaned because everywhere there's marks like that where it's been polished off needs to be, forgive the dogs barking, needs to be cleaned off and it needs to be lubricated. So at this point, this is going to be done. You don't need to lubricate anything else up into the slide. Go ahead and put this back together. You don't need to apply any lubrication to the guide rod spring. None of that stuff right now. What we'll go ahead and do is grab the frame here. Frame is going to be the same thing. Those areas are going to tell us where it needs lubrication. Go ahead, grab your oil again, put a drop on each rail, just like that. Okay. And you're just going to use that same cloth to rub that in and make sure you fold it over and get up underneath the rail like that. Get down in there in the locking block. And this is going to leave just enough lubrication on here to where you're going to be good to go. You don't need anything crazy on there. Now, if you feel you need a little extra lubrication, grab the bottle and put one drop right there on the rear of the rails. That way, as you slide this back on here like this, make sure your lever's up. It's going to drag that oil through the rails, lock it to the rear. All right, so I had to go put the dog outside. So once you get it back together, go ahead, ride that slide forward. You're going to do your functions check, which is a pull of the trigger, cycle the slide, make sure it resets and you are going to be good to go. Any excess that is on the slide, just go ahead, wipe it off because you do not need any oil on the outside of this with these coatings and that is going to be good to go. Well, hopefully that helped you guys out. So again, different manufacturers recommend different things. If you're gonna be carrying something every single day, you should probably be cleaning and maintaining that thing at minimum monthly. Now, generally I will clean something after every 500 rounds, after each range trip, if I don't put a lot of rounds through it, I just do a quick wipe down and make sure those areas that are kind of polished off or the coating's wearing are getting a little bit of lubrication. Now, as far as the cleaning we went through today, that's gonna to be up to you on when you wanna do that, but you should, like I said, at minimum, if you're carrying this every day, especially in adverse weather or sweaty conditions, do that monthly, if not weekly, depending on how much you actually use the thing. I hope that helped you out. If you're interested in anything you saw down there below, I will leave links for all that stuff. All of it's a huge support to the channel as well as the Patreon. Thank you guys all for everything you do. You guys get out there, have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.